What a wild week we had. The brief detour due to Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank getting closed down. But let's get back down to chip business. I have been meaning to do an update after the Tesla Investor Day and the curveball Tesla seemingly hurled at the silicon carbide chip market and air test systems specifically, which I think is the purest of the pure plays for silicon carbide chips out there. Now, if you're not sure what silicon carbide chips are, we have a link to our deeper dive into that embedded here in the video, as well as in the comments below, make sure you check that out. But let's refer here really quick to our semiconductor industry flowchart. Air test systems is a chip manufacturing equipment company. So it sits in this nice little chokehold point right in the middle of the flow of the industry and specifically air test systems makes testing equipment specifically for silicon carbide wafers and chips. So I, I think this is a fantastic pure play on silicon carbide, which is critical to the EV market, which means something Tesla says is going to have a pretty big bearing on this company's fate. I'm going to get to that in just a moment, but I want to spend just a moment talking about some of the other kind of wild things that have happened here in recent weeks since the last update in January on air test systems and maybe just briefly get you up to speed on what got us to this point in the last two months. Because as you can see from this chart here, air test system stock is down a bit from its highs. Not completely surprising. This is a small company and a volatile stock, but let me share with you what has happened as of late. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. So the first thing was the Silicon Valley Bank blow up specifically. Air Test Systems actually released a statement uh, because they are a small uh, up and coming uh, chip equipment business there was perhaps a little bit of fear that maybe they had some money on balance with Silicon Valley Bank. And indeed they did, but not much. Only two and a half million dollars had on balance at Silicon Valley Bank, less than 6% of the total 41.8 million air test systems has uh, in cash and short-term investments. So no big deal. And of course, uh, the government backing up all those de deposits at SVB Financial. So air is fine. The company also said they think that their customers are fine. So a uh, brief little blip for air test systems on that front. The second item, and what I think is actually far more important here, is back in February, air test systems announced they were doing an at the market or ATM offering of new stock. Basically, Air Test Systems sold $25 million worth of new stock on the market to raise cash. Uh, so $25 million, that's, that's probably not net of fees that they will have to pay, but let's just assume $25 million uh, in the bank for Air Test Systems. So nice little infusion of additional cash for this small fast growing business, but that means a little bit of dilution for existing shareholders. So $25 million as of this recording on March 15th is a little less than 3% of the company's total market cap. So not a massively dilutive event, but still I think significant. Now I, I think that's okay. This is, this is quite normal for a small company like this to sell some stock, to raise some cash, refill the coffers. I, I do think this does illustrate something that I said back in January after the last quarterly update. And when I revamped my model for the company's price target, I said, I thought the stock was a bit overpriced at that point. And I had a fair value on air test systems of about $25. Now I'll get to that in just a moment, but 
obviously here at this point. Since then, Air has been well over $30 per share. Uh, it, it It's quite common for a company to sell stock if they think the price is a bit on the high side and take the cash. So I think that's what happened. Again, not a big deal, but it does mean your slice of the overall pie gets a little bit smaller when a company does something like this. Okay, third point. And the real zinger that I lured you all here with, Tesla Investor Day comment. So of course, at Tesla Investor Day, the company made a comment about coming up with some new designs that seemingly reduced the need for silicon carbide chips by 75%. We had a very brief little dip across the silicon carbide chip universe, including at Air Test Systems, and then a really quick rebound after that. Air Test Systems CEO, Gain Erickson, still sees things being full steam ahead in spite of the Tesla comments, and I think had some really insightful things to say uh, following that investor update. Let's talk about that. Now, Erickson pointed something out uh, that's very important in some prepared remarks. Let me just read a couple of highlights for you so you get an idea of what Tesla was getting at with their silicon carbide device reduction comments. So Erickson said, Tesla clarified that the 75% reduction in silicon carbide chips applies only to the next generation lower cost drive units to be included in the new model platform. Uh, now that, if you follow Tesla, is referring to this Model 2 that has yet to be announced, but a lower cost vehicle that Tesla has apparently been developing for the last few years at least. Tesla clarified that this new 75% reduction in silicon carbide chips will not impact the current high-performance model platforms, including the models S and X and models 3 and Y vehicles. Also, air test systems believe that the new chips in the lower cost models will be 100 amps per device versus 50 amps per device today and likely 50% or more larger in surface area. Therefore, the number of wafers required will be less impacted. In other words, what Air Test Systems is saying here is though Tesla is finding a way to reduce the amount of silicon carbide needed in an up and coming lower cost model, basically the overall demand for silicon carbide wafers, uh, those disks that eventually get chopped up into smaller chips, Demand is still on the rise for silicon carbide wafers as the overall EV industry continues to expand. One more comment here from Ericsson. He said, in addition, during the Q&A session, Tesla further clarified that the new inverters would be made from a new Tesla proprietary custom module package and that Tesla would purchase the die from multiple manufacturers and package them in this Tesla proprietary custom module. Again, Air Test Systems sees this as a natural roadmap and consistent with the roadmaps stated by major manufacturers of silicon carbide, where the electric vehicle inverters will migrate multi-chip modules to reduce power conversion losses, improve thermal performance, simplify design, and lower overall cost of the inverter system. Therefore, we believe the business use case for our solution actually increases wafer level test and burn-in of 100% of silicon carbide dye and extended burn-in times will be required to earn Tesla's business. Again, in other words, it's full steam ahead as far as air test, test systems is con concerned with its silicon carbide uh, testing equipment. And it looks like the overall demand for silicon carbide wafers and eventually chips and devices really remains unchanged after Tesla's investor day. Now, the big question I know you were all asking and wanting to know, is air test systems stock a buy? Well, in conjunction with that Tesla investor day update, air test systems management reiterated their previous guidance 
for revenue to be 60 million to 70 million for the current fiscal year that ends this summer, summer 2023. So no change in the outlook yet, even though the company has really outperformed the first two quarters of the fiscal year, still re reiterating 60 to 70 million in revenue for the year. At the low end of that revenue guidance, that would represent about 18% year over year growth. At the high end, which is where I tend to think AIR is going to end up uh, reporting its revenue for fiscal 2023, that represents more like 37, 38% year over year revenue growth, which uh, is fantastic. Fantastic results for this company, especially given the economic environment uh, that, that we're in right now. Nothing to complain about there, but it does represent a big slowdown from the first half of the fiscal year. In the latest quarter that AIR reported in January, 2023, revenue growth was 54%. So if they end up only growing 37, 38% for the full year period, that means we're in for some big year over year slowdowns in Q3 and Q4. Now the Q3, Q3 report is coming up. Uh, most likely in April. So perhaps less than a month from now, we'll get another update from Air Test Systems. I'll get you up to speed on what I'm thinking at that point. But at this particular junction, my fair value estimate on Air Test Systems remains unchanged. Uh, 25 bucks is what I think fair value is. I said if the stock dipped below 30 bucks, I'd be interested in buying. It did dip below 30, but very briefly. And as of this recording, we are now well above 30 bucks again. Personally, I'm a little bit uncomfortable to add to my position at this particular point in time, but this stock is very much still on my watch list. I, again, I'll reiterate here. I think this is the purest of the pure play on silicon carbide. So if you think there's going to be a lot of growth for this particular type of chip substrate in the coming decade from the electric vehicle market, uh, from renewable energy projects and uh, electrification of the energy grid in general, electric trains, uh, electric electrified infrastructure in general, all over the place, I think air test, test systems deserves to be on your watch list uh, this just looks a little bit frothy uh, to me at this point still. So I'm being patient. One other note here that a few of you have asked me about in comments on previous videos that I think uh, is worth mentioning here. So subsequent to all of this news I just mentioned, on March 14th, Air Test Systems said its leading customer, which is most likely on semiconductor, ticker symbol, ON, uh, placed another order for wafer packs, totaling $6.7 million. I don't think this changes the outlook for full year revenue, or at least uh, as far as what AIR has updated us on up to this point. Let me explain why I think that is. So again, uh, CEO Gain Erickson commented on this. As we've noted in the past, Fox XP system orders are required to increase general manufacturing capacity, while the wafer pack contactors are unique to each new design win. As our customers win new designs with their customers, Air secures orders for new wafer pack contactors to fulfill these new wins. So the actual equipment, the actual systems, uh, Air has explained in the past, represents about two thirds of revenue, very, rough estimate over time, about two thirds of revenue. And then the individual wafer packs used to test the wafers and silicon carbide devices will be kind of a recurring ongoing revenue stream of about one third of total sales. Now, Erickson notes that this new order that was announced for $6.7 million worth of those wafer packs is actual a follow on order uh, to the one that was announced in January, when on apparently ordered that new Fox X XP system, uh, of course, they were going to need the wafer packs uh, over time. 
So this is just a follow on order fulfilling some of those wafer packs. Uh, most of the sales will be realized, it looks like, in Q4 of fiscal 23 and into Q1 of fiscal 2024, later this summer. So I don't think this changes the current revenue outlook. And thus, at this point, I'm not factoring any new additional revenue into my fair value estimate model that I shared with you during the last update. Again, since I think that fair value estimate is still valid, link to that video here in the video and in the comments below. Stay tuned for more updates on air test systems and the silicon carbide market overall. Remember, this is an emerging growth market, not an established growth market, an emerging growth market. So it is going to be especially volatile, uh, especially a small company like air test systems. My experience with companies like this tells me patience pays off, nibble in batches over time, and let the emerging growth story develop naturally and benefit your portfolio uh, as you add to the position in small chunks, gradually. I expect we'll have another update on air test systems when they report earnings here in a month, possibly less. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. Until next time, everyone, take care.